welcome to episode seven, ooh, seven of the Woolly Badger podcast. Um, it's a little bit later than originally intended because um, I just straight up forgot to do a podcast for like six weeks. Um, and I looked this morning and went, oh, that's that's been a while. Um, I have been doing lots of stuff though. I've been doing a lot of stuff, which I will show you um, some of it today. Um, there's been a lot of sort of prep for, I had a photo shoot about two weeks ago with Jem Hicks, who was lovely, lovely. Um, I will show those images as soon as I get them. I got a grant from my old school, which was nice, um, and decided to spend it on some actual photography. It's not just me and my iPhone and the uh, white wall in my house and a self timer, which was kind of alarming to do. I'm not gonna lie. It felt like a very big investment. Um, I paired it with investing in a website update, which is a sort of behind the scenes hosting update that I haven't actually done anything with yet. Um, and also with investing in moving my mailing list over onto a paid plan. So basically I parted ways with quite a lot of cash for um, like behind the scenes businessy kind of things. It feels a bit like the business equivalent of like getting dental work done. Like you know you need to get it done, you know it's going to be worth it, but it's a little bit painful to spend that much money on something. And yes, I possibly do have dental work on the brain at the moment because um, one of my fillings fell out on the weekend. It doesn't hurt, which is nice, uh, but there is just like a straight up hole in my tooth at the minute. Not ideal. Anyway, um, what the reason I brought the photo shoot up in the first place was because yes, I was trying to knit lots of stuff for it because as well as getting nice photographs of existing designs, like, you know, I will make, Jimmy Jab. I am straight up just living in this jumper still. Um, and I got some photos of my DK weight uh, summer down top um, because it's coming right into summer down season now. I'll put up a little photo thing over here of the summer down top. It's um, a really good spring one. It was, I think, my first adult garment design. Um, and I knitted two versions of it. One was a DK version and one was a four ply and mohair version. And I have lots of photos of the four ply and mohair one, but not so many of the DK. Anyway, um, yes, getting photos of those, but I also wanted to get photos of things that will be being released in the coming weeks, months, all of that through the summer. Which is what I have to show you today. So last time I was talking to you, I was showing you the yarn that was going to become a summer version of the Jimmy Jab, um, because you know when you just fall into a hole, <laughs> well, I should maybe make it sound a bit more joyful than falling into a hole, but you know when you just need to just keep wearing the same thing over and over again, um, when it's like in the wash or you can't find it, you have a small existential crisis, because um, you're like, what do I wear now? I don't understand. Um, that's a little bit been the Jimmy Jab for me at the minute, but I have been very aware that I run warm um, and there is going to come a point soon where I'm not gonna to want to be wearing a full jumper all day. That's not gonna be the thing. Enter, summer Jimothy. Oh yes. So uh, this was the yarn I was showing off last time. Look, it's, huh, spot the difference. I entertain myself too much. Um, this is Camaro's Organic Summer Wool. It is 30% cotton, 70% uh, merino, I think. And um, it's a four ply. So it's a much lighter weight fabric than the original jumper. And then I have used Rivenet's Chimera, I think so you say it, I never know, as the contrast. Um, it's kind of like your old friend, Classic Jim as you can see here, but it obviously is short sleeved. It is lighter weight. It has got my old faithful bust adjustment because the Jimmy Jab was where the bust adjustment began life. Um, so between sort of here and here, there's a section here where it increases four inches worth of stitches so that it fits all around. But what it also has, if I turn it round, look at that. That's not a dipped hem, that is a, 
the result of a horizontal bust dart along the front. So what that means is when I'm wearing it, my boobs pull the front up and the uh, head sits flat all the way around. Because um, basically I just wanted to be able to wear the Jimmy tab all year round. And that is what the plan is for this. So um, it's mostly graded. I've got the pattern half written up, I would say. I am hoping to open a test call for it within the next week or two um, because it's quite a quick little mitt because, um, you know, no sleeves. Um, and yeah, I would like to get the pattern out in sort of like late May, early June so that people can knit and live in Jimothy's all summer long. Um, I would say that, you know, the reason I went for the Camarose organic summer wool is because it is a sort of circular yoke. There's not a huge amount of structure to the design itself. And so it needs a yarn that still has a bit of wool in it to give it that bit of structure. Um, I would also knit it in Biobalance, which is, I can't remember who makes Biobalance all of a sudden. Um, BC Garn. Uh, I think off the top of my head, the mix there is the other way around. I think it's 70% cotton, 30% wool. But either way, it is a wool cotton mix. Um, and yeah, you just need the stability of that wool to hold it in place, I think. Um, but as you can see, it's a, you know, that's original Jimothy. This is summer. So this is 20 stitches um, to four inches. This was 23 or 24, can't remember off the top of my head. So just to give a bit of context to what I mean by needing the wool to hold the structure a bit, um, this was one of my summer designs last year. Um, and this was like my ridiculous obsession. For then, uh, this is the Colin You Flutter Me Tea. This one's knitted in Crea uh, organic cotton. And it's you know, designed for completely plant-based fibres because plant-based yarns tend to be drapey like bamboo super drapey super soft super lovely cotton drapey just doesn't have the kind of elasticity and memory that you that wool does as a fiber um this is designed to work with that so you've got the sort of funny fluttery sleeves the little cap sleeves and you've got the drape of the top um it's a chuck it on in the hot weather go for it kind of top um i have also knitted a version of this in the uh, organic summer wool and the sleeves kind of stick out a bit because the wool holds the structure of them. Give them that, I'll put a picture up here so you can see it. Um, this is one of the ones that I got photographed at the shoot because I wanted to be able to show, you know, properly how it sits with lovely drapey yarn. I didn't really get good photos of it last summer because I had my children all summer. There was no childcare going on and I snapped them snapped a few photos very quickly whilst they were having a snack um so you know yay working parenthood um i do still really love this design and i think i will be wearing it on the days i'm not wearing the summer jimmy uh but yes drapey drapey bit more structured uh, so the next thing that i finished and got photographed is this this is the bryony slip over and it came about in two ways. Uh, first is, you know, I just mentioned, you know, working on children and all that. My lovely, beautiful Stockholm slipover v-neck that I was wearing in the last vlog has died a sad and unfortunate death. It got toddlered in a curry vomit kind of way. It was a sad day. I'm going to see if I can resurrect it by... Uh, dyeing it because the stains ain't coming out but in the meantime I wanted another slip over and I went to my stash and I found this this is some gamer crafting DK that has been sitting there for years I mean this yarn is older than the toddler who destroyed the last slip over um I had just been if you watched the last vlog I have just been knitting a couple of Ursinas um by Jacqueline Seaslack and I became a little bit obsessed with the half brioche stitch in that so I decided that I wanted to have a sort of brioche slip over so uh, that is this one this is Bryony Bryony Brioche uh, so it's got it's another top downer so I have a uh, cast on at the upper back 
I've got little brioche and slip stitch details around the armholes uh, and around the neckline, which comes down into this line down the middle, and then the big chunks down under the armholes, which come up a bit short and they're cast off before the split hem because I don't know why, I just really like that look and I felt like doing it that day. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. This is one of my uh, most made it up as I went along, made it up patterns of recent times. Um, I made no notes, past me as an idiot. Um, but I do remember, this is designed to have negative ease on the bust. Um, I know that a lot of slipovers are kind of a bit more slippy slidey, uh, but I just felt like having a bit of negative ease on this one. So um, that is partly because I am myself busty and, you know, I want the rest of the slipover to not be hugely oversized. Uh, you could very easily just size it up and have a bigger fit. Um, this one was just knitted straight, absolutely no adjustments. It does rise up a little bit at the front when I'm wearing it because there's no horizontal bust starts or anything, but I, I am quite fine with that as a look. And also, I am knitting a second one. Um, so this is number two, which looks terrible at the moment because it is for some reason on a 60 centimeter needle. I don't know why, I don't know why. Like that's far, far too small for the size of thing I'm knitting, but there you go, there's the front. There's the side details. This is the new um, San Mizgan Pigint Marzipan Tweed. It's got all of these lovely colourful flecks in it, which I just, you know, Instagram got me, basically. I saw this go up on Instagram and I knew I needed to buy it. Um, I justified it to myself as a sort of, a neutral slipover is a really good thing to have. It's a really good thing to have. Um, and also this is a second sample. So not that you can really see it here, but I have put in along there a horizontal bust art to bring that front hemline a little bit lower. Um, I'm hoping this one will be probably September, I'm aiming for release of that one. Um, they're a good sort of transitional piece, aren't they? God, that's pretentious. Um, but yeah, I like having a summer dress and whacking a slipover over it and being like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit snugger now. Um, so yes, hopefully September for that one. We'll see. I say all these things, I make all these plans and then life gets in the way. But we can but hope. I mean, another part of the reason I'm saying September for the briny slipover is that I am trying quite hard to get a camisole pattern out and ready to sort of go in June, July time. I mean, I say I'm quite, quite trying quite hard. What that means at the moment is I'm just knitting a lot. Um, I will show you. Now, this is where we are so far. So this is Waku Yarn's Silky Sock. I cannot remember the name of the colourway right now. I will put it in the description, but... Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's 55% blue phase Leicester and 45% silk. The drape on it is crazy. The variegated yarn, all the colours, absolutely beautiful. Um, so yes, I bought it back at Stitch Fest in November and it has been sitting there waiting for me, waiting for me to come up with an idea for it and an idea I have had. So little lace hem because you know you don't want anything too fancy with a variegated it steals attention from itself that way and I've got these markers sort of here and here and I did have them around the back as well because it's got a little bit of gentle waist shaping coming in sort of in the center what I'm then going to do is full bust adjustment and then the plan is to raise the front of it a bit with short rows and then camisole it. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I would just also like to say, look how far this goes. This is one skein. This is one skein. And I still have this much left. And like, that's a lot of knitting for one skein. But uh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I'm just going to 
just going to sit here and stroke it for a little bit. So the final thing I was going to talk about today is spinning. I talked a bit about spinning in uh, some earlier episodes and then I kind of went quiet on it, um, which may lead you to believe that I have given up on it and forgotten all about it and just gone, whatever. Uh, that is actually not the case. I have been quiet, quietly spinning away. So here is my latest progress, but still just sitting there. Um, that, let's tap on that, try and make it focus, is what we're doing. This is a John Arbon Yarnadelic top. I think quench was the colour. Um, and I have been over ambitious. I have bought 700 grams of this. I want to try and spin enough yarn to make an entire sweater this year. Don't know what pattern the sweater will be. It'll probably be made up as we go because I also don't really know what yarn weight this yarn's going to come out at. Um, it is gradually getting a little bit finer as I go. I mean, if you look at that there, that's pretty skinny. Um, but I am going to ply it together because I just straight up do not trust my hand spun not to unwind. So um, what I've done previously, I've already done like one little like 40 gram skein of this is um, you applied two singles together and then put it into soak. And then my favourite part, favourite part of the spinning process is thwacking. <laughs> it's like they do on Bake Off when they're trying to thwack dough. And I can't remember why they do that. Is it stretching the gluten or something? I'm celiac. Gluten and I aren't friends. Um, but apparently when you do it with hand spun yarn, it evens the twist out. So I literally just sort of thwack it onto my kitchen table. And my family look at me like I have gone completely mad. And it makes me very happy. <laughs> yeah, I think this is very much a... Not slow and steady wins the race, because it's not really a race, but a slow and steady gets there in the end kind of situation. I'm still going for the uh, park and draft method because I am, to be honest, a little bit scared to try drafting whilst it's still spinning. Um, it's taken me long enough to not accidentally send the entire drop spindle uh, flying across the room while I'm trying to spin. So, you know, I've got a way that sort of works for me in a long-winded, takes forever kind of way, and that's fine. That's fine. I do not need to be super speedy with this. Um, but yeah, I'm quite enjoying it. It's, uh, you know, nice to really be going from the sort of fibre to the yarn to hopefully the finished jumper and I, I was talking to my six-year-old about it last night he was going oh yeah you're making that, that fluffy wool into yarn now aren't you mummy uh, he apparently was very scared by some sheep the other week until his grandparents informed him that sheep are friendly and that fluffy sheep wool is what mummy uses to knit with so he's now kind of fascinated by the whole thing so I am going to be taking uh, him with me to Fibre Quest on Sunday, I am teaching a sort of intro to colour work workshop and my boys and my husband are going to come along too. And they are going to, you know, look at sheep dogs, look at sheep. Stop me spending all of my money. Um, I just think it would be quite nice for them to kind of get a bit more of a sense of what I do. Uh, it's quite, it's quite nice to have a job that is understandable for your children. I mean, I had absolutely no idea what my dad did when I was growing up. I'm still not 100% sure on it. To be totally honest, I'm not very sure what my husband does. And I worked at the same company as him for seven years. Um, but, you know, I teach people to knit and I write knitting instructions. Yeah, the kids can grasp that. So anyway, I'm going to carry on just having a nice little spin here. And ignoring the vast amounts of work I have to do and all the patterns that I need to write up because I have just said that I'm going to get them published soon. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And uh, I will see you soon. Oh, if you have any recommendations for videos that can show me how to move on from this incredibly slow and ineffective spinning technique, 
do let me know. I probably should try and step it up eventually, shouldn't I? Anyway, see you soon.